To get rid of those pesky ads, request stories, listen to unlisted and bonus episodes, and to chat with the gang, support us by clicking the description link. I'm I a fucking man with a penis. I, think, I am not getting I a pedicure. A lot of men with penises you, go get pedicures. Yeah. yeah. Last time I went, there was a, a big guy sitting next to me. I oh, bet yeah? you I know someone yeah. that you know was that would- Was he hot? Was he a sloppy bear? Um, no. Is that a, that's the term, right? I don't know. How do you know that, John? Troll, <laughs> John's on the forums. He's on Grinder. Oh, that is so beautiful. Point Vicente. Point Vicente. Who is this? Who lives up here? Point Vicente. That's that's in California, eh, isn't it? Or Canada? No, it's in California. Aha. Uh-huh. Wow. No, it's in Mexico. No, it's not, Jen. Do you know what Mexico is? Oh, I saw it. I saw <laughs> Tijuana, and then I didn't see where Tijuana was, but I saw the word Tijuana. I was like, oh, Tijuana is in Mexico. Who lives this, over here? This is a little bit north of Los Angeles. Look at this place, man. Wow. 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 I'm starting this story tonight, February 23rd, 2011. This is the guy we're starting with. You want to describe him? His name is David Vines. V-I-E-N-S. I'm probably going to say Vines a lot because I've been doing that in my head all day when I'm doing this, when I was covering, doing this research, I kept saying Vines, but his name is David Vines. Well, V-I-E-N-S. If you, can you kind of describe him? He kind of looks... Uh, he looks kind of like uh, an, a college athlete maybe but older like, like early 30s yeah like he used to maybe be a baseball player I he does look like a baseball player but is think, that like is that syracuse university Pat? stanford i think i don't know oh maybe so, that would make more sense so somebody i think it was natasha yeah, syracuse is orange oh okay so stanford let, is red let me know when um either natasha I think it's Natasha said that she is familiar with this story. Anyway, February 23rd, and stick with me here because this is crazy as shit. February 23rd, 2011, David Vanes is driving with his relatively new girlfriend, Kathy Galvin. Just think of Vanes. Like his name is spelled like Vanes, just the I is backwards. When I think of, I can look down here. You could. Look at that big old veiny butthole. <laughs> David Vanes is driving with his girlfriend, Kathy Galvin. There was some really disturbing news that he disclosed to her, which we're going to get to in a little bit. But they're driving in his car kind of erratically. He's emotional, an emotional mess. He told her this news. She breaks down in the car, in the passenger seat. She's crying. They're arguing. They're fighting. And that's reflecting in his driving ability. Mm. And this is in California. Oh, on the coast. was Were they on the Pacific Coast Highway? A patrol car spots them, pulls them over. However, David, in that state of emotional just... Ah! takes off so now you have a, a police car chase here this david is is trying to outrun this cop car and they pull or he pulls to a halt real quick by that lighthouse that i showed you by the and the lighthouse is called the the point vincent lighthouse and this is a description the point vincent lighthouse is a lighthouse in rancho rancho <laughs> rancho you're correct, Rancho. I said Rancho. <laughs> like a oh. fucking idiot. <laughs> you guys, Rancho. We need to go to Rancho Lewis. Have you yeah, been yet? No. I was do. over by Edmonds Oast last week and it, they weren't open yet for the day, but they were cooking and it smelled so good. I bet it's amazing. We should go <sighs> next week. The Point Vincent Lighthouse is a lighthouse and ranch. Fucking titties. <laughs> <laughs> Ranchy. Rancho. 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 Like the dressing. Ranch. Point Vincent Lighthouse is a lighthouse in Rancho Palos Verdes, California. Good job. Proud of you. United States. America. North of Los Angeles Harbor. It's 67 feet tall. There's a lighthouse and stands on a cliff with a height of 130 feet. It is between Point Loma Lighthouse, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, they arrive around there because they're running from a cop. Now, the helicopter does get involved but I don't think at this time it had made it to the location. Okay. But what takes place next is is pretty disturbing. As I said, David speeds away. The cops chasing him. The helicopter's on the way. He pulls the car to a grinding stop. Just... Oh, hate that. Both David and his girlfriend, Kathy, get out of the car and they're still going at it. They're still arguing. She's bawling her eyes out. He's yelling. There's they're rumbling. He's she's trying to to get him to calm down. And she's a mess herself. And they're they're really close to this lighthouse area. He pulls to a stop. They get out there arguing. She's crying. She's trying to console him. He's not having it. 
And all of a sudden, the cop gets there, pulls over, rushes out the car, pulls out his gun, freeze, get down, because there was just a high-speed chase. Right. The cop's all amped up. Mm -hmm. David starts pulling away from Kathy. The cop is just freaking the fuck out. And at this point, the cop actually takes action and rushes after David. On foot. On foot. The only problem is they're really close to that cliff. Oh, no. He takes a rush at David. David steps back and he says a few words, and I'm going to go over the exact quote from the police report. But basically, the cops rushing at him. David gets a running start and he leaps off the cliff. Oh shit. I was not expecting that. Nope. Free fallen. And I'm free. And then somehow he's just suspended in mid- midair. And time stops. <laughs> and then he's abducted by aliens. <laughs> Quote, Baines again apologized to Galvin and said that no one was going to believe him and they were never going to be together after this. He also said to tell his mother and brother that he loved them very much. Baines then jumped off the cliff. The exact height, as I said, the cliff was... 130 feet. There you go, Jen. I was paying attention. But he jumped on a spot that was 100 feet. So it's 80 to 100. 130 feet is the cliff face. So it's like... But a hun- he basically jumped off a 100-foot cliff. So let's let's talk about why he he would do this. Why, why would why would someone jump off a fucking cliff like that? He was guilty of something. Well, he was mm-hmm. depressed. Running from something. He felt that he did not want to live anymore. He felt that he was invincible and nothing could happen to him. Mm. Um, maybe he thought he would survive the jump and was running away from the cop. What do you guys think so far? This guy jumped off a cliff. Nicole says he's guilty of what we don't know yet this was february 23rd 2011 we're going back now two years to 2009 and we're going to talk about his him and his wife that's them right there david and dawn this is his so was he divorced when he was in the car then like didn't you say he he was just new girlfriend i mean yeah but it's just a side piece yo i'm just kidding man no his wife went missing oh before this happened that's terrible well, just let me tell the damn story okay i'm sorry i was confused God, you're trying to get me in trouble me trying to get you in trouble yeah you can do that on your own without my help go on john it's okay you drank all of it 2009 october 18th 2009 dawn 39 years old his wife looking at this photo right here what do you think what do you think they're happy um I mean, it doesn't look like they're unhappy. It It looks like they, like, am I assessing this correctly? They got married pretty young. I'm going to get to this, but he has three kids from his first marriage. Okay. So she, I wouldn't say married young, but I mean, he's over 40 and she's 39 at this point. Okay. So, and she had, he has three kids with a previous wife. Okay. How long were they married for? How long were who married for? His first wife. Was that the person, the first, first wife in the photo? No. Oh, you guys are confused. How many wives are? there and behind door number one (laughs) who you're seeing right now is dawn don't worry about the first wife dawn and david vines she is not his first wife dawn and david vines this is his second wife okay Okay. do not worry about the first wife okay okay but he has he has three children with his first wife yeah but we're not worrying about the first he still looks awfully young in that photo though to to have three kids and already be divorced he said that he was 40 october 2009 Dawn Vane's David's wife goes missing. Oh. Together, they lived in a two-bedroom apartment in Lomita. Did the first wife have been custody of the kids, or were they living in the two-bedroom apartment with him and his second wife? So, at this time, the kids, from what I saw, were living with the first wife. However, okay. the oldest daughter, Jacqueline, who comes up in the story later, was in South Carolina. Oh. I'm guessing in college. But- USC or Clemson? I'm just asking. There's other schools than those. Well, anyway, I mean, yeah. In Oct- October 2009, David's wife, Dawn, goes missing. They lived in a two-bedroom apartment in Lomita. They were together for 15 years. It was a typical marriage. They argued, but made up. 
There was no physical violence that, that any witness has seen. And like I said, David had three kids prior to their marriage. In 2009, right before Dawn goes missing, the couple opens a cafe together. And one of our supporters has eaten at this place. Oh. It is. It was open Tuesday through Saturday. And it was called Time Contemporary Cafe. I like that. And I believe it's a pizza joint now. Oh. Hmm. So. It had an A health department rating. Oh, shit. I didn't even notice that. Is that relevant? I mean, I guess. Probably not to the story. Natasha says she's eaten there. That's what he said. So they opened this up. And, you know, I I was looking at the Yelp reviews Mm -hmm. about this place. And it looks pretty good. And a lot of people love this place when it first opened. Here's one right here from Evelyn. She posted this 2011. I really like time. And so does my family. Wait, what is time is a food, right? It's an an herb. herb. My friend took me to time and I came back three times after that. I really like like lasagna yada, yada yada she posts some of the food down there and it looks pretty delicious yeah it looks yeah, it hungry. looks like more than a cafe it looks like a legit like professional restaurant and i'm not saying that cafes are not professional restaurants i'm just saying like when you think cafe you think like coffee croissants like light fare but that looks like a a restaurant that had um, some to use that name or, i don't know so it's like, i don't know wh- why but oh, i don't know some restaurants will use the word cafe that's just my take when i think cafe i don't necessarily think a um like a full course restaurant. meal all right that's at 24427 Nar- narbonne avenue now let me tell you a little bit about dawn from what i found out at the time and this is a new restaurant and there were money problems but it's a new business it's like podcasting. It takes more than five years to to make a profit, right? Mm-hmm. Hopefully by year seven, we'll make some money. But the restaurant, they just started and there was money problems already, just like any business starting. Dawn was getting agitated and she started drinking a little bit more than she's used to. Mm. Was she like dipping into the bar at the restaurant? She may have been, but Dawn at the time was drinking about 18 beers a day. Oh, damn. She is is the restaurant owner per se she's the you know one of the owners so she's kind of in charge right she was she started she started out great but after the money problems and stuff like that she would yell at the staff or she would just blow up and yell at the staff hmm. all right at the time don is drinking 18 beers she's yelling at the staff she's miscalculating customer bills and at a time when the restaurant just opens that is not okay monday october 19th and as i said she goes missing on the 18th of october 2009 the the jumping off the cliff happened in 2011. This is two years before. Okay. 2009, October 18th is the last time anyone has talked to her. On the morning of Monday, October 19th, 2009, David, the husband, quote, looked tired and upset and told employees that Dawn would no longer be working there. He also appeared, quote, drenched in sweat. He seemed to be distraught and had a large bandage on his hand, end quote. Hmm, interesting. Especially in October, it cools down a little bit in California, if I think correctly. I mean, it cools down here. It cools down everywhere in October. Yeah. Damn, that shit is so good. The Disarono. You are going to regret this. A business associate later of David's recalled him saying that his wife is a, quote, sloppy mess who was drinking all the time, contributing nothing to the restaurant. In fact, miscalculating bills, costing the restaurant money when it needed it the most. And also in her drunken stupors inside the restaurant would be an embarrassment to herself and the restaurant in general. The owner, the manager, the 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 wife is drunk and serving customers, dropping plates. Yeah, you can't do that when you own a business. Quote, Vanes was reviewing the restaurant receipts as he talked and became angry when the receipts did not balance. He said, quote, that bitch is stealing from me and nobody stealing steals from me oh and i will kill that bitch in quote that is what well, was testified against that's wow. not sounding good no hmm. hmm does this have anything to do with the high-speed police chase i'm wondering this is dawn right here another photo of her oh she looks so nice and uh natasha have you ever so i guess if you ate at that restaurant then you've you've met david or dawn so if you want to kind of chime in live chat that'd be kind of cool had what would she have though do, did they were they always at the restaurant oh, yeah i mean a restaurant like that just opening. just a small place yeah Yeah, okay why are you making eye contact with me (laughs) 
And it's not even that you're making eye contact with me. It's like you're sustaining it. That's okay. It's fine. Let's talk about David's new girlfriend. Dawn goes missing. The husband, David, never reported her missing, never told her parents. Her parents go to the police three weeks later, says, my daughter's missing. David told the police, go check the mountains. Because the last time on the 18th of October, when Dawn stormed out of here drunk and on prescription meds, she said she's done and she's going to live in the mountains. So you know what? Go check the mountains. I don't have time for this. I work over a hundred hours a week. I don't like that. I don't like that answer because the mountains are a dangerous place. Yeah. From the Los Angeles Times, September 2012, soon after David Vaines asked his daughter to bag up some of, some of Dawn's clothes and take them to a storage unit. She tossed other clothes into a dumpster at the restaurant. Jacqueline Vaines said she had help from Kathy Galvin, a waitress who soon moved in to David's apartment. So you remember Kathy is the girlfriend. Right. She was a waitress at the restaurant. Yeah, exactly. She she was actually a part-time waitress there, a server. And right before Dawn goes missing, she started taking over her roles almost. Before I go any further, uh, Kathy Galvin has nothing to do with the wife's disappearance at all. In fact, she was the first one to notice that Dawn's personal belongings were still at the home. And if you go back to the car ride in the cliff, David had told her some disturbing news. And that's why she was upset. Uh So I just don't want... She she has nothing to do with it. She was kind of... She just uh, happened to be... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Got it. Because... What she thought is that, you know, maybe she did just... That, like, Don just left him. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because she did see some problems, but... But it is kind of weird that after the wife leaves, only two weeks later, he begins that romantic relationship with his employee. Yeah, that's a little quick. Very quick. That's when she noticed a bunch of her stuff, like cell phone, purse, personal belongings, makeup, stuff like that, still in the apartment. So it's like, how is she going to function without her, Mm -hmm. you know, stuff? Yeah. Phone stuff, you know, wallet. Right. Anyway, the husband, David, said that she just simply just walked away from the cafe and said, I'm done with this. That is when the the law enforcement started to take notice. All right. Now, Kathy Peterson is a good friend. She was also the interior designer. When the couple, David and Dawn, decided to open this restaurant, they immediately started to redesign the place to fit their needs. So it was going to be some reconstruction going on. Mm -hmm. They hired this uh, Karen Peterson, and Karen became a good friend. Dawn's mother actually died died in 2009 and since then her dawn the missing woman and karen have been very close to each other in august of that year after she goes missing she recalls that dawn at one point had quote red marks on her neck Hmm. and she asked dawn why like what's going on you know we're friends now like what's going on dawn started crying breaking down and said that she had been drinking or said that he had been drinking and he tried to choke her choke her out i'm not I mean, I know you you said that she had nothing to do with the murder, but like if you're very close with someone and they just even if it was if it was the case that she just left and said nothing, like I just think it's very strange that within two weeks you would be right up like with her husband. Yeah, I, you know what I mean. Like yeah. I know that guys have a bro code, but like we, you know, girls have a girl code too, kind yeah. of like especially if if Don divulged that he was abusive, even if he was drinking, like especially in that manner like i just think it's kind of strange and i'm not i am not saying that she had anything to do with don's disappearance but it's just kind of kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth that she like shacked up with him right so away. soon yeah yeah, it, yeah i thought about that too it's kind of however there is a theory out there that if you're happily married and like your wife dies or, or whatever then you're real quick to get remarried have you heard of that no. no, I haven't heard that, but I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about on Karen's end. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I've, she's a certain, honestly, I didn't go into her background, but she's probably young and dumb, honestly. Well, I mean, you can be quote unquote young and dumb and not like shack up with your friends. Yeah. And, and I, two weeks after you go missing. I know. I thought about that too because did they were was something going on before she went missing between the two of them? I didn't see anything like that would make m- much more sense. Yeah. to me. But I did see that she was starting to take over the 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 roles at the, the restaurant. Roles, well, the, the yeah, but like and even starting s- to get kind of groomed, I guess. But I mean, there wasn't a lot of time that she worked there because this restaurant just opened in two thousand nine. You know, and yeah, and. 
and and the and the uh, the wife disappeared soon after. The wife was getting irritated at the staff, so I was thinking, oh, she's going to yell at me, you know? Well, I'm going to try to f her husband type of thing. I don't know if that's what she was thinking. She she's she is innocent in all this. I was just yeah, going to say, but it's yeah. just kind of t- if it's one thing if she's getting groomed and she feels special if he's like putting responsibilities on her and like making her feel good. But but even but even then, like if you're close with someone, I feel like as a female, like, OK, for example, if anything happened to you, Nicole, you best know two weeks later, John and I are not shacking up because that's not unless something was going on with you before. Right. That's where the, the time where I think that makes sense sense i don't know man he was know. working a hundred hours a week yeah I, so you so he's spending a lot of time with this person but his wife is there she's just but a terrible that, but matter. sometimes it doesn't matter i guess i see your point i but can like, see like little still, little like flirtations was, and stuff yeah like i think there was yeah something was going on yeah i mean I don't know. I guess like because I'm kind of naive in that. It's like I don't think I could do that to like if I was close with a friend. I don't think I could do that. I would imagine they maybe they weren't that close. Yeah, but what, I don't know. He, I was just saying that because he said that they were they had gotten close. That's the you, only reason. I brought no, that up. no, 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 no. Hold on a second. I, I know. What, I'm talking about Karen Peterson here. This the interior designer was close to Dawn. Oh, no, not not the girlfriend. Kathy is the the girlfriend. Oh, oh, oh okay. Sorry, no, you're sorry. Fine. Okay. I, I should have uh, been more clear. No, 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 no. That's my fault because I thought you were talking about the girlfriend. Okay, sorry. No, Karen. Karen is the interior designer. She doesn't work at the restaurant. Got it. And she became close to Dawn after Dawn's mother passed. And so, I, you know, I don't think the mother... This was just a... Kathy is just a part-time server. Okay. And she's there, you know, just to do her job. I don't think I don't think the mother, maybe she noticed flirtations or whatever, but then again, she's drinking 18 beers a day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot. That is a lot, yeah. Like sometimes I check out at two and I'm like, I don't need any more. Which is an improvement on well, what days of the week is that? <laughs> <clears throat> it's okay. Quote, Vanes was angry with her and she was afraid that he was going to beat her up. Patterson could hear Vanes pounding on the door and yelling, but could not understand what he was saying. Patterson wanted to call the police, but Dawn asked her not to because Vanes could lose his restaurant. At this point, she's talking about Dawn called her on the phone, her best friend at this point, in the bathroom. She had locked herself in the bathroom. David's drunk, beating on the door, trying to choke or abuse her. She locks herself in the bathroom, calls her friend, and then Dawn is begging her not to call the police because, I mean, they couldn't lose the restaurant over this you know yeah the publicity the bad publicity yeah here's another photo of them i don't know if you can see that if they're happy or not i, don't know. I mean she looks ha- like she's i mean he kind of looks to- like he's pulling away but i'm, I'm kind of like that too man i just don't i it's not that i'm pulling away like it's just i don't know I just we don't, don't have photos together yeah from I wedding, have, pretty no much. i have a couple of them but like like no, we, but, we sleep in separate beds got it but i mean like he just doesn't he looks like he doesn't want to be in that picture she i i hate to talk poorly about people who have been deceased but she looks like she may have a, a few beverages in her yeah just by the way her no, eyes I, I are see, yeah, like you know I what i mean that. like yeah, it just no. doesn't look i mean she's smiling but it just kind of looks like no, i mean I, like i look half the time yeah that that does make a lot of sense one other oh, sorry no you're good there was a, a couple other events right before the the missing october that neighbors in the apartment heard loud yelling objects being thrown this, that, and the other. All right, so let's talk about the the daughter. Jacqueline Vane said, quote, they seemed like they loved each other. The daughter said that Dawn was, quote, no saint. She'd wake up in the morning and drink all day long. Dawn was also prescribed lorazepam, hydrocortone, morphine, and Benadryl. She, oh, she was on a morphine prescription? And that's what I thought. For yeah, what? For, like, that's for, for nothing. pain. For just being a housewife, I guess. I mean, I didn't see any medical problems with her in my research. It wasn't anywhere that I could see. Maybe what? she knew a doctor. There but we like... go. Because, I mean, hydrocodone, lorazepam, which I'm on lorazepam, hydrocodone, am I saying that? Hydrocodone and morphine, that, that's a, those are strong. Those are very serious. You very drugs. rarely see a morphine prescription. That's what I'm saying. Like morphine. God damn. And she, I mean, she it's was not also, the 1920s. She was also taking Ambien, but I didn't see that prescribed to her, but she was getting it somewhere because that was one of her things. She would drink a lot and take Ambien. Oh, that's dangerous. And 
dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous because that can give you erratic moods. What I was looking up, even hallucinations and stuff like that, it could have very dangerous side effects. Mm. So this lady was not in a good place. No, she was not. The stepdaughter, Jacqueline, remembers multiple times. Now, she grew up with with uh, a Dawn. Remember, they, they've been together 15 years, mm-hmm. the new stepmother. So Dawn or Jacqueline was only like four years old. She grew up, she grew up with the stepmother, Dawn. Mm-hmm. She remembers on multiple occasions doing cocaine with Dawn. Now, she's testifying this stuff. Okay. Wow. I'm not I trying mean, to talk bad about the de- no, but decedent, I mean, but it's, you know. It's not exactly a mother-daughter activity that you would expect, but, I mean, this is California. So, in October 9th, the, the father, David, asked the, his biological daughter, Jacqueline, to come back to the restaurant. She was living in South Carolina. He needed help. Because at this point, Dawn has just completely checked out or whatever. It's not until Jacqueline gets back that she notices that Dawn isn't even in the house anymore. And then the excuse was, oh, she went to the mountains, yada, yada, yada. David had said that she had stormed off after an an argument. However, at this point, it's not being believed even by the the law enforcement. The law enforcement is getting heavily involved. As you see here, they actually search, not only search the restaurant, but break into the foundation to to find her body because they, oh. they don't they don't believe that she well, ran away. I mean, I'm, oh, I'm glad that they're taking serious steps because I was going to say, like, if someone on those types of pre- like, well, her prescriptions were in the house still, like if someone on on that type of medicinal cocktail, like, you know, Can't live without it. Right. <sighs> Natasha said that it is California and she was getting crazy drugs after giving birth to her daughter, including morphine. Holy shit. Really? Wow. Hmm. Why would you get fucking morphine? Jesus Christ. That's what you get soldiers that are You do know our P.O. box number, correct? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's a joke. That, that is, is a joke. That is. Well. That's a lot. That's what you give people when they're like in so much pain. They're, they're dying. dying. Yeah. All right. So we talked about the abuse. Obviously, you guys, come on. You guys know what happened, right? Um, he done killed her. I'd like to phone a friend. Nikwiz. I'm going to say he killed her. Okay. Uh, yes, he Regis. Threw, did he throw her off that cliff? Regis, I'd, I'd like to answer the question. What? My phone a friend says she has been her. gone for two years and then he jumped off a cliff oh did he, he, t- go to oh, okay. did he like join her all right so let let me go back to the cliff let me go back to the cliff we're going back to the cliff 2011 i'm gonna right. wrap this story up this from the daily mail if you can read this police follow husband suspected of killing his wife 16 months ago to edge of 80 foot cliff and watch as he jumps off but survives oh oh that's what you call a cliffhanger is that a title for this episode? That's a good one. Cliffhanger. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Lieutenant Dan Coleman of the L.A. County Sheriff said, Lieutenant Diane. It's amazing that he survived. That was a pretty steep cliff, and he landed squarely on the rocks below. That fucking 100 feet in the goddamn air. <laughs> He tried to kill himself. He left off to kill himself. Right. And he used to fucking survive. Like, what? Or his That's legs. karma. <laughs> his karma. And the, the lieutenant's like, well, shit. <laughs> That's a confession if I've ever Daniel seen one. Lieutenant Daniel ain't got no legs. It's like, dude, all right. Well. Natasha's like, keep going. You're building it up. <laughs> <laughs> That was a pretty steep cliff, and he landed squarely on the rocks below. Ouch. We intend to talk to him in the hospital, Lieutenant Coleman said. He has carried a tremendous amount of guilt for some time. He will be arrested and charged with Dawn's murder. And, and they actually got a confession in the in the hospital. So it's crazy. The guy survived. Here he is right here in a fucking wheelchair. Well, I would he, like, expect. literally bro- broke every bone in his body. <laughs> I'm surprised he could, like, sit up. At that point, you're just like, dude, okay, yeah, well, I did it. Like, what do you want to know? Jacqueline actually asked him in 2009 about her stepmother's whereabouts. David said one night he was, or David drunk one night. They were in the car. He told Jacqueline the following, and this is from the Los Angeles Times, September 2012. Dawn Vaines had been needling him, and he just wanted to sleep. Jacqueline Vaines recalled her father saying he tried barricading their bedroom door with, uh, a dresser to keep his wife out. When that didn't work, David Vane's tied her up and taped her mouth. 
mouth. According to his daughter, the next morning, Dawn Vanes was dead. Everyone, from the most part, we do we do buy that story, even though he's changed it a few times. We think, or the police do think that that actually happened. Like it was an accidental it was, death? It was an accidental death, yeah. I'm not accidental. He's, he duct taped his wife's yeah, mouth. Yeah, but I mean, like, he didn't it, intend to kill her. He was just... Yeah, Dawn had, quote, choked on her own vomit, end uh. quote. This is his exact words when he's confessing in the hospital. Because at that point, you're just, God has saved you to fucking rotten prison. Yeah. Just might as well go with it. Quote, I go in. I take the Ambien. I move the big burro, burro in front of the door. She gets in. She's just raising hell outside the door. She keeps saying something over and over. I tell her and keep telling her. Either go spend the night somewhere else or I will go somewhere else. You're not staying here because I can tell. I'm going to jail any minute for all this domestic violence. And up to this point, I haven't even seen her or laid a hand on her. So I lay back down and the ambient kicks my ass. I get real lightheaded on these things. So I'm laying there and the next thing I know, she's all over me and she's got the light on my face, calling me all kinds of mean names and stuff. And mm-hmm. I keep I keep telling her, well, you remember she is uh, she's obviously an alcoholic really drunk mm-hmm. and at, at this point, probably hit Hitting him as well, Mm -hmm. you know, that's speculation, but they were in a domestic dispute. So I'm laying there and the next thing I know, she's all over me and she's got the light on my face, calling me all kinds of mean names and stuff. And I keep telling her the same thing. Just leave me alone. I just need to sleep. Remember, he's working 100 hours a week. Mm -hmm. I just need to sleep. Just let me sleep. And then I get up and I grab her right by the hand, both hands, and I bring her into the living room and I go ahead and I force her on the floor and I wrap her hands up real quick. I wrap her feet up real quick. I take a piece of clear duct tape, wrapping tape, and I put that over her mouth. And that was it. I said goodnight. End quote. That's what he said. The police looked in four different spots. The problem is they couldn't find the body. Well, you know, well, okay, all right. We we do buy this story that you did this. Mm-hmm. But where's the body? We done tore up the restaurant. I mean, you saw him tearing up the concrete, the restaurant. Body's not there. Where is the body? Jacqueline Vane's had a suggestion. Quote, one time Jacqueline Vane's testified her father is a long time ago. Her father had joked about how to get rid of the body by cooking it. He's a chef. Oh no. She said. California chef slow cooks his wife for four days. And our good friend Natasha actually ate there during that period. I'm just kidding. She didn't eat there during that period. I just used my crock pot to make a roast. It was, turned out really good. <laughs> but damn. During the second interview in the hospital, Vane's said about disposing the body. After realizing Dawn was dead, I came up with the, the idea of cleaning the grease traps in the restaurant and commingling the excess proteins in those units. I placed Dawn's body in a large vat of boiling water and slowly cooked it for four days. I then mixed her remains with the grease and other debris from the restaurant and placed them in a large garbage bag inside the dumpster. What? Natasha goes, oh God, no, I didn't know that though. I didn't Uh, know she went missing in 2009. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my. Oh my God. Uh, so well, th- this is from our Discord right here. I don't like that. This is oh from our Oh boy. This is from our Discord right here. This is from Tasha. If you want to read this. Oh shit. I totally forgot about that. Oh my god. So I have a hometown case that's right outside. Oh shit. It's the Time Restaurant murder. The chef owner of Time Restaurant in Lamita, California, killed his wife and dismembered her and cooked her to dispose of her in the kitchen of the restaurant. He got caught, eluded police for a bit and jumped off the cliffs of Palos Verdes, but fucking survived. <laughs> and then uh Lauren I said- ate there before the murder. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy oh all right you need to go and check your bank uh receipts and see when you ate there if you ate there during those because he killed because he killed her in 2009 yeah but he was when she cooking was her body the whole time wolfie says natasha's going to eat there uh, so maybe think twice before you have John cover a hometown <laughs> murder for you all. Damn. Like he cooked <laughs> his wife and served it to people. No, I didn't say that. He said he he didn't serve it, but he's using the same pottery to, to freaking cook his uh, wife. Well, that's better. That's better. <laughs> that's better, Natasha. I mean, at that point, I would just serve it. I would. Dude. Oh, my God. If you, if you want to call it a special of the day. If you go, go oh. big. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, Dude, no. if you're gonna go go big or go home, man, if you're gonna do it anyway, because I, I mean d- it works. He's a chef. Yeah, but you cook you know. it for four fucking days. It's gonna be ten. Come as fuck. on, man. Four fucking days. Come on, yo. That's a lot. Close the restaurant for four days. <laughs> That's too much. That's like passion right there. That's like East Bay Deli. What we just ordered right there. No, we ordered McAllisters. Oh, but um, <laughs> <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> So he he did claim that the uh, skull he kept in his mother's attic, he was going to... I do think he did love Dawn, and I honestly don't think he was just doing this to get this new girlfriend. I do think it went too far. I do think he taped his mouth shut, and I do think he felt guilty. Can I just say something? And he tried to kill himself. Yeah, but this is uh, one of the headlines here. uh, Cops crockpot wife killer. (laughs) (laughs) If you are ever in a case that you accidentally kill someone, please, for the love of God, just call the police. No, fuck that. You got to hide that shit. You will do better if you just call the police and say, I fucked up. I did not mean to do this. Now, if you're intentionally killing someone, I mean, like, I hope you're not intentionally killing someone. That's different. But if it's an accident, you need to report it as soon as possible. I've been thinking about writing a a short book. Basically, the premises I've covered 400 true crime episodes this is how to kill your spouse i don't and, like that i, I know but it, i mean they would sell a lot on the mm-hmm. black market no but think about it no, because it would probably sell really well i can I do i can do different like i pretty much can tell how to get away with this shit like yeah. we've done so many of these fucking cases true literally you know what i'm saying i don't know i don't know i don't think you should be instructing people yeah no. yeah like if you're gonna write a manual write a cookbook like your wife did okay i can do a cookbook too oh no i retract that <laughs> statement <laughs> I retract that statement. (laughs) (laughs) Done. (laughs) All right. Well, that's all I got, man. So I guess that's it. So if you guys like this, Talk With Me podcast, I'm sitting here with Jen and Nicole. We release episodes every Tuesday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We live stream every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And... Be sure to follow our sister podcast, Among the Dirt and Trees. And I'll put that in the description link below. And that's all I have. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Be sure to subscribe to this if you're not already. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people.